All right, today we're going to dive into one of the most mind-bending concepts in astrophysics, gravitational lensing. It's like nature's version of a magnifying glass, but on a cosmic scale. Gravitational lensing doesn't just make things look cool. It helps us uncover the mysteries of the universe. So let's break it down. No dance. Oh my God. Okay, well, maybe that wasn't as funny as it thought, but then. So, what is gravitational lensing? Gravitational lensing happens when a massive object, like a galaxy or a galaxy cluster, bends the space-time around it. This bending causes light from a more distant object behind the galaxy cluster, like another galaxy or maybe a quasar, to curve as it travels towards us. Why does this happen? This is due to Einstein's theory of general relativity. Einstein's theory of general relativity tells us that mass warps or bends spacetime, and other masses follow the bends and curves of that spacetime. Here we have a pretty standard setup, essentially a fabric stretched over a circular frame. We'll use this to model spacetime, hence the term spacetime fabric. This space-time right now is flat and has no bends or curves in it. And that's because we didn't put any mass in it. This object we will use to model any large massive object, a galaxy, or it could be a cluster of galaxies, and sometimes even a black hole. Now we'll place the massive object in space-time and see what happens to the fabric. These bends of space-time right here will be what other masses follow. So if I pull out another mass, such as this one right here, Let's pretend this is any other massive object, maybe a planet, and that might be a star, or anything of the sort. Putting this in space-time, it'll start to follow the curves of that space-time, essentially going around in what we call an orbit. This is because the mass is constrained to what we call geodesics. But what happens if we pull out a light particle? What happens to this light particle in a Newtonian gravity situation? Particles that are not massive in the Newtonian framework do not get affected by gravity, but in an Einsteinian general relativity framework of gravity, light still has to follow geodesics. It still has to follow the curvature of the space-time. It has a different path. Nope. However, light particles move very, very fast. When I put a planet in the system, it will follow an orbit and stay in that orbit. So what happens when we put a light particle in this system? When I put the light particle here, it's going really fast, right? so it will not be trapped by the gravity. That's essentially what these massive objects are doing to light particles on a cosmic scale. These light particles, as they travel towards us, get warped around the trampoline of these massive objects on its way to us. What it will do is get slightly warped as it just clips the edge of the trampoline on its way to our telescopes. And that is what we observe in our telescope. There are three main types of gravitational lensing depending on how strong the effect is. The first panel here shows strong lensing. This is the most dramatic type. When the lensing object is extremely massive, like a galaxy cluster, it can create multiple images of the same background object, arcs, or even a full ring of light called an Einstein ring, which we'll get into soon. In the second panel here, we see weak lensing. This is more subtle. Instead of obvious arcs, weak lensing slightly distorts the shapes of galaxies in the background. Astronomers usually analyze these distortions to map the distribution of dark matter. Lastly, we have microlensing. This happens on smaller scales, like when a star or a planet acts as a lens. But that's a story for another day. Today, we're sticking to the big stuff. Alright, I don't need to call you big like that. Alright, uh... Ugh. Anyway, gravitational lensing isn't just a pretty trick. Why is it important? Now, it's a powerful tool for astronomers. For one, it helps us measure the mass of the lensing object. By analyzing how much the light bends, we can calculate the total mass of the galaxy or the cluster, including the invisible stuff, or dark matter. That's right! Gravitational lensing is one of the best ways we have to map dark matter, the mysterious substance that makes up about 85% of the universe's mass. Without lensing, dark matter would remain completely invisible to us, we quite literally discovered that there is more mass in the universe because lensing tells us there is. Let's talk about one of the most iconic examples of gravitational lensing, Einstein rings. These happen when the lensing object and the background light source are perfectly aligned with Earth and our telescopes. The result? The light from the background object gets bent into a complete circle. 
they are absolutely stunning. They also provide astronomers with incredibly precise data about the mass and the shape of the lensing object. I mean, come on, look at this, guys. Ladies, if your man does not put an Einstein ring on your hand, what are you doing? Think about that first. What is that? So, how do we actually use gravitational lens? First of all, it helps us study objects that are otherwise too faint or too far away. The lensing effect magnifies light, letting us observe distant galaxies and quasars in incredible detail. It's like having a cosmic telescope built into the universe. Second, lensing lets us map the distribution of dark matter. Since the amount of bending depends on the total mass of the lens, including both the visible and invisible or dark matter. And finally, Gravitational lensing helps us study the early universe. By observing these distant objects, we're looking back in time. And keep in mind, lensing helps us see really, really far objects. And seeing how galaxies and structures are through lensing helps us understand how galaxies and these structures formed billions of years ago. So that's gravitational lensing, a natural magnifying glass that's helping us uncover the secrets of the cosmos. From mapping dark matter to studying the early universe, it's one of the most powerful tools in astrophysics. So what do you think? Is gravitational lensing one of the coolest cosmic phenomenon, or is there something else that really blows your mind? Let me know in the comments, and keep looking up, guys. See you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It's free, and you can change your mind at any point in time, and it really helps me out as well.